what's going on youtube and welcome back to my channel if you've been here before thank you for returning if you are new to the channel make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and share this video if you like what you see you saw that title you saw that thumbnail today i'm going to be making my dog's homemade dog food that tackle his allergies his shedding and his dry skin let's get into it First, we're going to be starting off this video by cleaning and prepping the vegetables. I'm going to be thoroughly scrubbing and rinsing them because they have a lot of dirt on them because they are fresh vegetables that I got from our local food store. So I do want to make sure that everything is thoroughly washed, scrubbed, and cleaned before cutting them up and putting it in the dog's food. So while I am prepping the vegetables, I do want to talk about why I initially put my dog on a homemade diet. So if most of you don't know, dogs are supposed to eat a raw diet. That is what allows them to thrive and live the best life and have the best health that they possibly can. Dogs are carnivores and omnivores, so they need a lot of meats, they need a lot of fatty acids. They also need a lot of vegetables in their diets and fruits. And I know there's a lot of people that are going to say when dogs are out in the wild or when animals are out in the wild, they don't eat vegetables and things like that. They just eat the meat. They don't eat vegetables. They don't go to different places of the earth and eat vegetables, but they do eat animals that do solely eat vegetables. So that's where they get a big source of their vitamins and minerals from eating other animals that eat fruits and vegetables. Also, I would like to set a disclaimer. I am not a vet. I am not a vet tech. I did not go to school for any of this. I am just a groomer that did a lot of research on what dogs need in their life to help them thrive and have the best health. The reason why I decided to do my own research was because of my own personal dog who was diagnosed with a heart murmur, as well as for my clients who come in and ask me different questions about their dog. And I just share with them the research that I've done and they take it and they do their own research and they come back to me and tell me what has actually helped them and what was beneficial to them and what didn't work for their dog that may have worked for my dog. So I like to be a source of information for my clients just in case they may need it or if they were curious in doing the research on their own and wanted maybe my opinion. But all in all, I started this journey because of the health complications that my dog was experiencing and I wanted him to live a better life because he is a senior. The amount of research that I found on how to help a heart murmur, how to aid to allergies, how to aid to shedding was so extensive and I'm glad I did the research because my dog Charlie has been 10 times better since then. His shedding is has been reduced to about 90%. His allergies, he used to have such bad tear stains on his face from his allergies. His, tear, his eyes don't tear anymore. I'm still working on getting rid of the actual staining. He used to have dry flaky skin. He used to bite at his back end a lot, his tail. He does not do that anymore and it's been life changing for him. So that is why I don't mind sharing the recipe that I cook for my dog because I know if my dog is going through it, somebody else's dog is going through it. And for pet parents, we essentially all need to stick together. And if there is something out there that is helping your dog, chances are somebody else is going through that. So just share the knowledge. Just a quick tip, red bell peppers are so beneficial to dogs. They have vitamins A, C, and E in it, and they have tons of antioxidants. Because they are such vitamin and nutrient packed peppers out of all the peppers, they are a great, great added benefit to your dog's food to help the immune system. They also act as an anti-inflammatory, so they're great for seeing your dog with arthritis. ingredients that I did not add to this food which I sometimes add to his food one is about two or three cloves of garlic and before you start saying garlic is not good for dogs garlic is actually good for dogs in small quantities it is really good for their gut health and it cleans and it cleanses out all of the yeast in their gut apple cider vinegar is another great benefit to add to your dog's food you can also add it to your dog's water that is another good thing to help cleanse the gut but it also helps a lot with tear stains. 
I don't add garlic to every meal that I prep for him because I don't want to add too much to his system because it can be bad in large quantities. So I only add it in maybe every other meal or every two meals that I prep for him. But it has been life changing for his yeast on his feet as well as his stomach. Did you guys see my camera fall? So I had to lean a little small bottle of water up against my tripod because every time I would cut the vegetables or the meat, the camera would shake and my tripod would fall over. So I had to improvise. The food that I'm making will last me about a month and a half to close to two months. I use six pounds of ground turkey. I also use three pounds of beef stew meat. I add in chicken hearts, chicken livers, beef kidneys, as well as chicken gizzards as his organ meat, and then a ton of vegetables, and I add the fruit as needed for his meal. I will also pack his food in storage bags, gallon freezer storage bags, and pull them out by the week because I found that the food will last up to about a week, maybe a week in two days without spoiling. And for Charlie's weight and size, he eats about a pound of food a day and he only eats once a day. I learned that with feeding dry food, they have to eat twice a day. But with home cooked food, because of the nutrients and all the vegetables and minerals and all the fatty acids that they need are right there and they don't really get diminished by being processed over time with dry food. They're more prominent in home cooked food. He doesn't need to eat as much home cooked food as he did dry food and his weight has been maintained and he's been more healthy and vibrant. I swear it's almost like he's a young dog again. I want to share the reason why I cut up the organ meat so small is because when it's cooked I feel like it turns into a hard meat. Also just as a disclaimer for those that are going to use chicken gizzards they stink to the high heavens. I don't know why I chose it but he loves them so I keep them in his food but the chicken gizzards for sure when they're cooked they turn into like a hard ball so I like to cut them up real small but just so you know they do stink. Just as another disclaimer, if you are going to go on the home cooked diet, or even if you're going to opt to feed raw, you have to make sure that the food is balanced. They have to have a balanced diet because dogs require a lot to keep their body functioning normally, as well as staying very healthy. Especially if you're going to start your puppies off on a raw diet or a home cooked diet, they need certain things in their diet to help them grow properly, to help their bone structure and things like that. For dogs that have heart murmurs like my dog, red meat is very vital in their food because they grab a lot of L-carnitine from red meat and that is essential for the heart to pump normally and function properly. Dogs also need taurine. Taurine can be found in chicken. It can be found in ground turkey. It also, I believe, can be found in red meat. I opted for ground turkey for his food because he has an allergy to chicken. I learned he can eat the organs of a chicken, but he can't eat the actual chicken meat. It's so weird and beyond me, but whatever works, works, and I just kind of go with it.
so I use this beef bone broth that I got from my job because it has a lot of ingredients in there that are really really beneficial for dogs I usually use chicken broth but this time I opted for beef broth because it has a lot of added benefits for dogs because there was so much vegetables I had to go in and steam them down and this is what it looks like when it's coming to pressure and then it'll just pop up when it has come to pressure and then you can turn that valve just to release the pressure faster I'll go in mash up the vegetables just so there aren't large chunks in there and everything can be distributed evenly throughout his dog food But this is what it looks like when it's partially cooked before I add the second batch of rice as well as the final portion of ground turkey. But this is how I kind of mash up everything and separate the ground turkey so there is not a big basically loaf of ground turkey in there for me to mash up once it's done cooking. Because this batch was so large, I had to separate it into two different bowls. So this is the pot that I'm going to be showing y'all. And for each measurement that I say, it's going to be for both bowls included. So it's going to be double than what you actually see me put in the pot. First, I'm going to add two teaspoons of ginger. Next, I'm going to be adding two teaspoons of ground turmeric. Now I'm going to be adding four teaspoons of dandelion leaf. Now I'm going to mix everything in so it's evenly distributed throughout his food. In my mind, if I mix it in separately, it's all evenly distributed as opposed to mixing it in in bulk. Two teaspoons of flaxseed. Two teaspoons of chia seeds. And now I'm going to mix it all together. And just to give you guys a heads up, the flaxseed will give the food a mushy texture. One full can of pumpkin puree. That is a 5.5 ounce can. Six organic non-bleached eggs. Now I'm going to give it a good mix. Because the food is still hot, the eggs pretty much cook while they're in the hot food, but you can give your dog raw eggs. Then you add in the shells of the eggs. That gives the dog the calcium. And this part you definitely mix in thoroughly because you want those eggshells in that water to be evenly distributed throughout the food. Now it's time to meet the judges, even though they'll just about eat anything. <laughs> Hi, Bells. Hi, Belly. Hi. Is it Charlie? Hi, Charlie. Hi, Yazzie. Hi. Just the three stooges. As a baby. Yeah. You ready, to go outside? Come on, let's go. Come on. Oh, you're right. Now it's feeding time, and this is where I add all of the fruit as well as the additional supplements that he gets on a daily basis. As I stated, he eats one pound of dog food, so I kind of just scoop out what I feel is one pound. First thing I'm gonna add is sea kelp. I get this off of Amazon, and this is really good for his thyroid. I add about one fourth of the scoop. Then I'm going to go in and add the fish oil. I add one teaspoon of fish oil to his food. Then I mix those in thoroughly so it's evenly distributed throughout his food. Then I add in toppers from Instinct Raw. It is a freeze-dried raw booster to the food. I add this one for skin and coat and this one for gut health and they go crazy over it. I don't have a set amount, I just sprinkle it and go. And then they get one Omega Treat that is rich in three, six, and nine. Charlie is the only one that gets these next two supplements. They are really good for his heart health and to keep his heart functioning and pumping normally. After I add the supplements, I go in and add the fruit. They all get blueberries, blackberries, and raspberries. Blueberries are good for the eyes and tear stains. Raspberries are good for the heart, and blackberries are good for the digestive system. Now it's time for the judges to give their opinion. Let's see what they think. Go ahead. 
Go ahead. Looks like we have a winner. They all seem to like it. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Drop in the comments what you want to see next. If you have any questions about anything, I will check you guys in the next video. Love you guys.